Last night, Laura Loomer won the Republican primary in Florida's 21st district in a major upset, a double digit victory. She was outraising her opponents and the collective screeching of the left is, well, it's upon us. And I'm sure many people are laughing about it. You see, Laura Loomer was canceled from, you know, she was banned by basically every social media platform and even other services. And it was a bit excessive. You see, I've long been warning that banning people doesn't work. You know, if someone here's what here's what happens. Okay, Laura Loomer gets banned from all these platforms. They all all these leftists start gloating and laughing, saying, ha ha, we got her banned. And then they assume they've won, not because they've actually won, but because they put blinders on simply because Laura Loomer isn't on Twitter anymore doesn't mean that she's not actively working. And now she's winning. Well, she's won her primary. And you know what? I, I, I would I look forward to her winning this congressional seat in Florida for one very simple reason. And I'll throw it to David Re, uh, Reboy. He says, I was never a fan of Laura Loomer, but having someone in Congress who's been deplatformed completely is more important than whatever excesses she's guilty of. I'll put it this way, man. First and foremost, it's come up and it is it is a reckoning for those who think cancel culture works. It doesn't. Some people have been banned. They are gone, but that's on them. Some of these people who, ha- who have been banned, and I think banning is wrong, let them engage in conversation, have simply chosen to stop working. Laura Loomer didn't. She went and ran for Congress, and now she's won the primary. And you know what? Even though she's in a D plus nine district, Florida 21, it's very blue. I think it's possible she really does win because of the tremendous support she has. Listen, in a place like Florida 21, D plus nine, if you activate new voters and inspire Uh, you know, maybe uh, disenfranchised or disaffected conservatives, they'll come out to vote in larger numbers. Now, of course, the left may be in panic, panic mode because they don't like Laura Loomer and they really don't want to be proven wrong. So they may come out in great numbers as well. I think we're going to see massive voter turnout in Loomer's district. But Donald Trump has congratulated her. Matt Gates endorsed her. And I say, congratulations, Laura. You know why? The left has been playing dirty games just the other day. I don't know. We don't know who did this. But one dude, Byron Donalds in Florida's 19, somebody sent out text messages claiming he dropped out of the race on election day. He didn't. That's what he won. Good for him. You play dirty games and you lose. I'm going to laugh at you. So you can you can criticize Laura Loomer. And I am not talking about her policies or positions or opinions. I am talking about the fact that you play dirty games. You lose. I laugh at you. Laura was canceled from all of these different platforms. Meanwhile, many other leftists get a free pass. Right now, she's on Parler, 630,000 followers, because while they were gloating, thinking they won, they pulled one of the stupidest moves ever. And all they did was disabled their their access to information. How dumb do you have to be? And they keep doing it. Laura Loomer's victory here in the primary is good. And a victory in Florida's 21st with giving Laura a, a, a solid congressional seat, putting her in Congress. First of all, we'll give a, it'll give all of us a great advocate for free speech. Again, I'm not I've never been a big fan of her, uh, you know, policy wise, but I think she's clever. She's pulled off many stunts that have worked and she's definitely going to advocate for free speech. So you know what? You're not going to see any complaints from me. And you're going to see me laughing at the left who have done it completely wrong, completely wrong. Let me read this first, and then I want to show you some of the results and some of the reing from those who are just so angry that she won. Well, it's your own fault. You, 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 you ban people, you play these dirty games, and this is what happens. Trump congratulates Laura Loomer on winning GOP primary for district that covers Mar-a-Lago after she called Ilhan Omar anti-Jewish and slammed Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey for suspending her account. They say Loomer, 27 defeated five candidates to win the Republican primary Tuesday for the U.S. House of Representatives seat that includes Trump's Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach. Great going, Laura. You have a great chance against a Pelosi puppet, the president tweeted in a show of support for Loomer late Tuesday. The far right activist who has been, who has the backing of Trump's friend and former advisor Roger Stone, Rep. Matt Gates and Alex Jones will now take on Democratic Representative Lois Frankel in the November general election. You can see this photo of of Loomer. Donald Trump has congratulated Loomer pictured on winning the GOP primary for the district that covers his Mar-a-Lago estate. They say Loomer took the lead in the Republican primary with 42.7 percent of the vote with nuclear engineer turned professor Christian Acosta coming in second with 25.5 percent. Other candidates in the race included a former burlesque dancer who now runs an exotic animal business and a former IRS investigator. 
Trump cast his vote by mail in Florida's 21st district primary election after changing his official residence from New York to Palm Beach back in October. Loomer won by double digits. You know why? I'll tell you why. There's a lot of things Laura Loomer has done for which she has been criticized, and I think rightly so. But she's also proven that she doesn't back down. And this is the biggest uh, piece of evidence. What do what do many Republicans want? And I'm not saying I agree with them, but I'm telling you, you got to pay attention to this stuff. They want someone they know will fight for them and never give up. Now, I'll tell you this, man. Loomer has that in spades. She's banned from just a ridiculous number of platforms. You know what she did? She ran for Congress and she won her primary. That says a lot. I mean, just just the fact that she was running said a lot. So people got behind her. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she really does invigorate Many people tired of the left's antics, censorship, and cancel culture. Keep in mind, the Cato Institute poll came out a little while ago, showed 62% of people have feel like there's opinions they have they can't express. So you know what? People might not like Laura Loomer's opinions or the things she said in the past, but they're probably going to say, here's someone who's going to fight for my right to speak. And if she can speak, and if she's going to fight for this, then I can go back to saying normal things the left would cancel me over. I think you got it. You got a free speech advocate coming in, you know, guns a blazing figuratively. They say other candidates in the race. Oh, I read that. I'm sorry. His and Melania's ballots were returned to Palm Beach officials Monday in time for their votes to be counted. According to the Washington Post, the president's decision to cast his own vote by mail comes after. His, now, I'm not playing that game. Trump voted absentee, not vote by mail. Absentee is when he requests a mail in ballot because he's out of state. Clearly, he's in D.C. He's the president. Vote by mail is typically, you know, it's universal. Everybody just gets a ballot whether you ask for it or not. They say it's not clear if the president voted for Loomer, but his social media post confirmed he approved of her victory. I'd be willing to bet he did. The controversial 27-year-old has been slammed for making anti-Muslim comments on several occasions in recent years. In November 2018, she was accused of hate speech when she called Rep. uh, Ilhan Omar anti-Jewish. Quote, isn't it ironic how the Twitter moment used to celebrate women, L- LG- LGBTQ and minorities is a picture of Ilhan Omar? Loomer tweeted about the Democratic Minnesota Congresswoman. Uh, Congresswoman. She said that Ilhan was pro-Sharia and pro-FGM and said that under Sharia, homosexuals were oppressed and killed. Women are abused and forced to wear hijab. And she said that Ilhan is anti-Jewish. For that, she got banned. I believe that was the actual tweet. And that to me was shocking. You know why? You don't have to agree with her. Again, not about agreeing with with her positions. It is about the fact that she has a right to express them. And she was criticizing a federal politician. You get banned for that? That is creepy authoritarianism. I would much rather have a, a country where people can say things I don't agree with, you know, to the federal government, to politicians, than to live in a place where technocrats, big tech billionaires, multinational corporations can shut down your speech. When she was banned from Twitter over the incident, Loomer handcuffed herself to Twitter's New York offices. Yeah, and then she trended on Twitter. Isn't that funny? The same month, she was removed from a congressional hearing on social media when she hit out at CEO Jack Dorsey for shadow banning conservatives and accused him of trying to sway the midterm elections towards the Democrats. This came after she was banned from using Uber and Lyft for tweeting that she said someone she she wanted someone to create a non-Islamic form of Uber. She complained that she couldn't find a driver who wasn't Muslim. Again, I, I, I don't agree with a lot of the things she posts, but I, I agree with her right to express her opinions 100%. And I'm definitely, I'm, I'll tell you this, man, when she won, I laughed. I laughed. Congratulations, Laura. I laughed at all of these people who played dirty tricks, who would shut down someone's right to speech. They deserve to see, they deserve to sit down and re. I'm not going to go through this. Let me, let me show you. First and foremost, here's Laura Loomer on Parler. 630,000 followers. Did you think that simply banning her from Twitter was going to do anything to stop her? No, she's driven. She wants, she, she and that, I've said, it, I made my point. And now you can see all you've done is you've put up your blinders. Here's Josh Jordan. He says, a week after the Republican Party chose a QAnon supporting 9-11 truther, they nominated Laura Loomer. I don't know specifically who he's referencing, but there is one candidate who said something like Q is worth listening to or something like that. A very bland kind of passive support. I'm not a big fan of the Q stuff. You know, whatever. I'm no fan of conspiracies. I like hard evidence. But the media likes playing these games and they like manipulating, false framing. And here's here's what he says. If you're wondering why some want to burn the party to the ground, this is it. The fringe that is shaping the GOP won't go away if Trump loses. They'll only be more emboldened. Yeah, well, guess what? 
The Republicans seem to be doing all right. We'll see how things play out in November. It's the Democrats that are breaking up into a million pieces. The Republican Party seems to be rolling along. Oh, we got more for you, though. Here's Aaron Rupar. Laura Loomer winning elections is why America can't have nice things or go outside or have society any longer. Yeah. And I'm sure many people would say that about Ilhan Omar. I'm sure many people would say that about AOC or Anna Presley. You get the point. You've got a fringe, far left, white supremacist sect growing in the Democratic Party, and you're complaining about Laura Loomer. Sure, I get it. Maybe you want to go back to what you would consider normalcy of establishment politicians that never did anything. Nah, I'm not interested. I don't think it's fair to say it's not so much about radicalization or extremism. It's about aggression. What we're seeing on social media, you're getting particularly more aggressive, more active, more bombastic characters. You know, gone are the days for the most part of this, you know, just like calm, well-mannered, boring individual saying, I'm going to run for office. And now you've got people standing up and saying no and yelling. I'll tell you what, you want to complain about Laura Loomer winning? Sure, I guess. But what do you think the rest of us, you know, disaffected liberals and many conservatives feel about the squad and the fact that more progressives have been unseating their their establishment Democratic moderates? Not like I'm a fan of the establishment Democrats. I think they just say whatever they have to say to try and win, and they're made of plastic. It's not real. So I think when you get people like AOC, at least things are interesting, right? But there are way more progressives in, uh, in on the Democratic Party, more far leftist extremists who would support violence than there are right wing, you know, extremists. Well, actually, there are no real right wing extremists. And to be fair, AOC and the, and the squad has absolutely warmed up to the establishment, but their politics are certainly you know, on the fringe left, 100%. Granted, their part that that's growing in the Democratic Party. And I guess the only reason they're sitting back and not complaining about the likes of AOC is because to them, it's normal. They are the extremists. They are the far left. The people who would defend 83 nights of riots. They're not regular Americans. And I think the reason people are voting for Laura Loomer is because for one, she's standing up for free speech. Guess what? As David said, she's been banned from all these platforms. I think about it this way. We got a lot of problems in this country. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'm not, I don't live in Florida, so it's not like I'm going to be voting there. But I'll take a staunch defender of free speech. You know why? If Laura really does have opinions you don't like and says things you don't like, she's fighting for your right to challenge her on those opinions. I respect that 100%. So if that means we get a free speech advocate in Congress, excellent. I will agree with Laura's free speech. She, she agrees with mine. And then we will debate the ideas. It's that simple. Well, here's, here's, here's one of my favorites to which I responded. Kevin Roos of, I believe, the New York Times still says Laura Loomer has been banned and forcibly removed from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Uber, Lyft, PayPal, Venmo, GoFundMe, Teespring, Medium, CPAC, Shakespeare in the Park, and won a GOP primary by double digits. And I, what, 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 you know, what are you, what, what are you saying about all of these uh, uh, posts? I'm not I'm not telling you that you should, you know, go out and, and I'm, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to come out and tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to say vote for Laura. I'm just going to say when she won, I left. That's that, that's really it. At these people who think that the use of a technocratic authoritarianism will win them the game. You know what I mean? No. Nah, you think banning works? Here's what I here's my take on it. Oh, no. Banning people didn't work. Loomer won by double digits because all banning did was ensure you had no idea what she was actually doing. And now you're shocked that it happened. She has 630,000 followers on Parler because she's working. I want to show you this. Well, you know what? Let's jump over here first. I'll show you Laura Loomer on, on, on Ballotopedia. We have the candidates and election results. And this is actually fascinating. I did a segment the other day talking about these two races and the two people that I talked about ended up winning. I didn't know if Laura was going to win, but, but I, think, I think they show this here. Check this out. Laura Loomer raised, you know, just a $1.16 million dollars. And Reba Cheryl raised 350000 She raised substantially, just a, a, an absurd amount of money. But check this out. This is important. Florida's 21st congressional district is solid Democratic and has been for the past several months. So you've got the Cook Political Report, Inside Elections with Nathan, uh, Nathan L. Gonzalez, and Larry J. Sabato's Crystal Ball. He says safe Democratic. The other two say solid Democratic. So while people are cheering for her primary victory, I think it says a lot about the state of the Republican Party. No longer do people want to tolerate do nothing establishment politicians. The same is true for Democrats. I can respect that. 
Why is it these progressives are starting to win? They didn't do as well in 2018. They did a little bit better this time because I think people are getting sick and tired of these phony plastic politicians. Laura's anything but. So you see these establishment boring types and you're, what are you really going to do for me? People don't approve of Congress. They find it to be boring and, and ineffectual. Then you see someone like Loomer comes in and fights tooth and nail nonstop. She gets banned from Twitter. She locked herself to the door of the Twitter HQ, started trending on Twitter. She, I, I think it was Nancy Pelosi's house. She like hopped the fence with uh, some, some migrants or something. Like she, she's done a bunch of things just to show that, I mean, for one, it's not to show anything, but to just do her thing, right? To, to make her points. But it does show that she's active, that she's fighting. And I think the Republicans finally wanted someone who's going to go in grit their teeth and say, enough, we're making changes here. Whether you agree with their politics or not, again, the same is true for Trump, Matt Gates, or any of these Republicans. When you don't pay attention to things like I'm saying now, you lose. The Democrats should realize this. Even though the district is solidly Democratic, I think Loomer has a really good chance of winning. Even though we're looking at these you know, election maps and betting odds saying Joe Biden's going to win easily, hands down, Trump's chances of winning is 17%, maybe, I just don't buy it. I feel like it's a fool me once, shame on you, you know, fool me twice kind of thing where the polls were wrong in 2016. The, 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 the Politico uh, Beltway journalist bubble is only worse. And now we can see Loomer just crushed the primary. Will she be able to beat a Democrat in a strong Democratic district? That's a good question. And that's going to be it's going to be a tough fight. It is. But I do want to give a shout out really quickly to uh, the 19th district where By- uh, Byron Donalds won. This one is really, really interesting. Check this out. Of the Republican primary candidates, Byron Donalds took the victory. I don't know if they have the campaign finance listed here like they do. They don't for uh, Loomer's district. I think because Laura Loomer raised so much money is why it was shocking to so many people. So maybe it was predictable that she was going to win. But Byron Donalds was also the victim of dirty tricks. You may have seen the story yesterday. So congratulations. This is a he is a conservative black American pro Trump. None of that, in my opinion, should matter. What should matter for the most part is that he is an American citizen running for office. He's standing for what he believes in. And someone tried illegally shutting down his campaign with dirty tricks, sending out a text message to everybody saying he was dropping out with a poorly edited video from his 2012 concession. Well, now he won the primary. So I don't know if they have the uh, uh, results of. so, So this is a red district. It's R plus 13. And that means Byron Donalds is very likely going to win. And he is he is repl- uh, so Francis Rooney, who was the incumbent, has has withdrawn, disqualified or didn't make the ballot. Really interesting. It looks like a pro Trump black conservative will be entering Congress. And I'm, and I'm glad to see people standing up, getting active, you know, fighting for what they believe in. This guy more than ever, in my opinion, deserves it because the same thing that I said for Loomer. You want to play these games, do, do these dirty tricks. Here's what I want. Here's what I want. You know what? I made this point on the IRL podcast recently. I like commercials, you know, where it's just straightforward. You're selling me a razor. OK, Gillette does this dumb commercial where they're like toxic masculinity. Buy our razors. It's the stupidest thing ever. Do a commercial where you're like, hi, I make razors. They cost this much. They have three blades. They're smooth with, you know, a, a, a lotion on them. Shave your face. It'll be great. Trust me. They're awesome. Here's the deal. I like those commercials. And it's funny because the other day I was I was skating and listening to Pandora. And I think it was a Harry's ad. And it was literally that he was like, hi, we sell razors. They, they cost this much. You can buy them here. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. I'm like, that's all I wanted. That's what I want. I want something straightforward. I want regular people who will stand up and say, here's what I believe. And we are entering this new era, which is really fascinating, of authentic politicians. Authentic. Whether you like her or not, Ocasio-Cortez, She's well, actually, no, I I was going to say she was. I take that back. (laughs) She's not. She's become a self-obsessed celebrity narcissist, in my opinion. Initially, though, we could see that many of these people who are starting to stand up were just real. But I don't think that's actually true for a lot of the Democrats. Now that I think about it, we do have Republicans who are, however, and I think Trump is that authentic character. I I, got to say, man, when when I see what Laura Loomer says and does, while, again, I don't agree with her on some of the things she said, I think some of the things she's done is offen- uh, has, has been offensive. But I do think she really means what she's saying, and I absolutely respect that. It's exactly what I said about Bernie Sanders. 
Back in 2016, I said he really does believe it. He means what he's saying. It's about time. It's refreshing. We got a politician who was, well, being honest, I guess. And that's why a lot of people like Donald Trump. He just says it. He's not lying to you. He's not pretending. He stands up there and he says, you know, he makes fun of whoever he needs to make fun of. I'm not a fan of, you know, the, the, the negative approach, you know, mocking people and, and, and being, you know, fairly disrespectful. And Trump on that is very, has, has improved greatly. But I think when Trump says he wants to do, th- do something, it's because he really does want to do it. I look at all these Democrats and they feel fake and plastic. And I was going to I was going to say AOC was it was authentic when she does her Instagram stuff. And then I realized, no, she just joined the plastic establishment. That's what they do. So Laura Loomer and I, I, I haven't seen too much of Byron Donald's you know, campaign stuff, but I'm, I'm glad to see a new fresh faces, people coming in. And I will absolutely say Loomer deserved to win. It's a primary for sure. But you deserve to win because, like I said, you cheat and you lose. Well, that's 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 karma. That's justice. OK, but also she's she's saying what she means. And I think the American people want that. So I, I won't repeat myself. I'll just leave it there. We'll see how it plays out in November because it is an R plus nine district. It's going to be a tough battle. I'm willing to bet with the president's support now behind her, she's going to raise ridiculous sums of money and may actually activate all of those people who are tired of the phony fake politicians. And they will take some someone like Laura Loomer, offensive as she may be, because she's authentic, right? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. It is a different channel from this one. Check it out. And I will see you all then.